The opinions made in this video do not necessarily coincide with that of Imaginary Goddess, or anyone else for that matter. Viewer discretion is advised. It's easy enough to just walk away Then coming to terms with what to say This feeling inside I just can't bear Wavering here, wavering there It's Ben Wheeler, the Mercenary King here with some Oh, uh, Night of the Tr Sun Trial Decks, and a Force of Will, Matt, that's pretty awesome. Wait, did I already? No, I'll open this one first. As you can see, it's got Tayo, who's kind of a little bitch, I guess, for most of the anime, and never really grows out of it. Um, but he played Gurgawit, and so now you can get your Gurgawits on the cheap. Two boxes will do you. That's basically the only reason I bought these, for the Gurgawits and the Strides and a uh, Common and the Starter. Yeah. That's about it. However, it's still pretty good. As you can see the box, I think this is a grade 3. This is Gurgawit. This is... a trigger maybe? I'm not sure. And some thing here. You are leader Vanguard on the planet Cray. So on so forth. 52 decks, enough for one player. Uh, characteristic, a starter's guide. Night Sanctuary is a sacred nation protected by the Holy Dragon, and as the name of the second standing army suggests, the members of the Gold Paladins are a proud order of knights clad in gold armor. They excel at tactics that use their connections to call forth their comrades and attack as one. So really, it's like nepotism, the deck. Um, which ain't bad, by the way. I like a good bit of nepotism. Which, it literally means giving your nephew a job, basically. Huh. Nepo, nephew, something. This is what the starter deck guide thing looks like. Uh, I prefer the old ones actually, but this ain't bad. Uh, honestly, because the old ones used to have a lot more rulings and stuff in them that um, did it. Uh, that sort of helped guide players and give people ideas about things. Looks like this is the playmat. And it's got stuff about the deck and combos, which I actually like. Uh, young card fight, Taiyo Asakuwa. You know, branch with his activities, he used to be timid and obstinate, but after mingling with Kronos and Rest, regained his smile and enjoyment of Vanguard. And then proceeded to betray him for the season's villain. Good job, kid. Good job. Oh, Fire's Collection. As you can tell, I'm not really a fan of the guy. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the first season in general, except for Kanzaki. Kanzaki was awesome. This is actually a pretty good playmat as things go. They actually did the colors really well, so it's a sort of a light color blended in with the orange colors, but you can still see everything. Um, nice gradient on the damage zone. Ain't bad. Not really much else to say about it. So the deck, 52 cards. That means that there are two strides in here, which is the bare minimum you really need. I mean, sure, you could do it with one, but what's the point? So, actually, this ain't a bad foil on it. Um, actually, this is pretty cool, because it's got, like, I don't know whether how well you can see it on here, but it's got, like, shines and halos about it. Uh, Golden Ray, Ray Wrath Dragon. This unit, Unite, this unit is active. Stride, obviously. Um... Unite, this ability is active if you call two or more cards to rearguard or guardian circle that during this turn. This unit gets plus 5k. All units in the front row get plus 2k. You see, I forgot about uh, the guardian circle as well, which means that there's bullshit to pull and shenanigans um, with some of these guys. Uh, like this guy, Unite, plus 3k. That's interesting, during your opponent's turn. Anyway, plus 5k, and all units rear guards in the front row get plus 2k. That's not a bad ability, uh, because it can help 12k attackers hit, like, uh, 21 and um, 10, 8ks to hit, like, 10k, so it can boost up to hit numbers. Um, I really wish it did more, though, but if you're short on strides, this guy won't fail you. It might be a little better than Cray element, certain Cray elementals. Because I don't much care for uh, Blizza for any reason. 
Then we have Sunray's, Sunray Knight Gurguet, and he's got like a fireworks thing going on with his halos. Uh, sort of shadow thing, I don't know whether you can see it, but... Uh, his G-Break 2 is Counter Blast, Soul Blast, the beginning of your guard step when you uh, battle this unit was attacked. Look at top four cards that pay the cost. Look at top four, search one card among them, Cardian, call them the Guardian Circle, tap, shuffle deck. Guess what? He activates Perfect Shields. And he gets through guard limitations. So let's say a Metal Borgs player coming down your ass with a 54k um, break ridden Sin Buster and, you know, it's looking at curtains for you because he's got two laurels on the field. Not just one, but two. Um... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make a difference, but still. Uh, you know, he legioned with having two Urbusters on each side, so he's going to kill, like, four of your units this turn. And then you're like, okay, so top four. Oh, look, a perfect shield. I guess, you know, the perfect. I can use perfect shields if they're called from back. And then his, you know, forces are stopped, and he's just sort of standing there, sword in his hands, wondering what happened. Uh, so basically, top four, you choose something, put it on the Guardian Circle. Pull out Candace. Then... Once she's put on the, once this unit is placed in the Guardian Circle, I can pay the cost. There's no limitations for anything that says, hey, you can't guard from hand. Um, Matt, Blaster Dark Diablo, I'm sorry, no, Phantom Blaster Diablo, does that prevent all guard or just from hand? Um, cannot call to guard from hand, I believe. Yeah, so in other words... F some uh, bastards playing meta with Phantom Blaster Diablo, you can start laughing at him with Gurkwit. It's great. He's a really great guy. But of course you're playing Gold Paladin, so you can just pay the two rear guards to guard anyway. But, let's assume things are harder for you than you think. Uh, when you stride, you can counter blast one, look at top four, search for one card, call it to rear guard, and then it gets plus 2k until end of turn. Basically, there's a combo that you can pull with a with certain strides that can summon from the top four immediate. Oh wow, I forgot this guy was in here. Uh, so summon from the top four immediately, like uh, uh, if if Polier or something like that. Basically, it's counter blast, soul blast, top two choose one, put the other one on the bottom, so that you can get unite immediately. Or you can play something like Aglavale, even though wait. Aglavale requires a li uh, um, Liberator. So let's say that you could... No, wait, that requires a Liberator too. Damn it. Okay, let's see top four, and then you choose a Lopier Shooter. Lopier Shooter, you discard a card. I hate Lopier Shooter. You discard a card, top three, choose one, put the rest of the bomb of the deck. Um, or a Fomgall. There we go. That's the one I wanted, or a Fomgall. You know, you summon out and you just hit Unite automatically. Unite is one of the easiest wordings to hit as long as you're not stupid i guess you know as long as you're paying attention you will get unite to hit uh to activate just by using gurgwit so i don't know really know what they're going for unite we'll have to look forward to that later um but i just hope it's it's more awesome stuff with more combos uh divinity lancer dragon unite when this unit attacks the vanguard plus 3k until end of battle you know, that's okay. Honestly, at this point in time, unless you don't have any other cards, you don't have to be using him. You can start using other cards. If you have the luck to have Pelinors, you can combo Gurguit Pelinor all day, and it's hilarious. Blade Cross Lion. Counter Blast 2, and this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle. Look at top four. Uh, search for one card. Call it to rear guard. Rest on the bottom of that in your order. That's meh. Again. This isn't really a card you have to play unless you have no other choices. Uh, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, plus 6k, G-Break 1 on the Vanguard Circle. That's also eh. Well, um, the Aqua Force one is really the only one of these that I consider really good for the value because it re-sands your rear guards uh, and helps you hit higher wave, which is a fantastic, you know, uh, wording for their abilities. Um, but this... You know, it doesn't even really have any Unite effects, like the Divinity Lancer Dragon. So unless you want something cheap and good for a basic deck, this isn't guy isn't going to cut it for anyone. Knight of Dawn Light Jago. Uh, 10k. Holy Mage, Elio. Counter Blast 1, put this unit in the soul. When this, by the way, this, there is no G-Break. And of course, this is only on Rear Guard. Pay the cost. If you do, look at top three. Choose one. Call it to open R. Rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. 
So basically, you have a 9k on hit, search top three for a counter blast for one. And guess what? He's not limited to what he calls. So you can just keep on going. What's that? You don't like any of them, but you got a catch call? Let's keep going. That's how you use them. Uh, until you have something good. Like, if you combine it up with, like, Liberators or something, you could actually, like, hit, like, Aglavale and just let Aglavale go and then, like, hit a Fomgall or something stupid like that. No, wait, you can't do that on Aglavale. But with Aglavale. But, like, you know, you could use him and hit a Fomgall and then summon something out if you did it when you stride, that sort of thing. All kinds of stuff. I think he's a four of in every, uh, major deck. Especially if you can't get your hands on the 9k... When it's boosted, Cannabis 1, top 3, choose 1. 12k Attacker, Knight of the New Sun, Catillus, Unite, G-Break. Why did they give it G-Break? 12k Attacker. I really wish he wasn't G-Break, because uh, otherwise he'd be really good. And I don't mean broken good, I just mean really good. G-Break, Intercept, plus 10k until into battle. I'm actually starting to like e these guys more and more. Uh, this guy doesn't even have Unite or anything like that, so basically he's a 15k shield while he's on the field. And he will be a target for your opponent's units, which is both good and bad. In that you can waste guard defending him, or you could just let them kill and waste some attack. That's basically how you use him. Knight of Morning Shadow, Kimarcus, 8k booster. Uh, Knight of the Red Day, Runo. G Break 1. When this unit boosts a unit, the boosted unit gets plus 2k until end of battle. So, like, with the 12k attacker guy, that means. Come on. Whatever. Uh, 12k attacker guy, that means that this guy's a 9k booster, so he hits 21k. That's not bad, but it's not good either. Um, again, if he was not G-Break, he'd be really good. Uh, but there are other things in Gold Paladins that just have so much more utility and more abilities to sort of combo off that it's not really worth playing him too much. Uh, Donning Knight Gorbadoc. Choose a grade 3 from hand and reveal it. When this unit is placed on rearguard from hand, you may pay the cost. By the way, you can't activate him on Gurgur with. That's why he says from hand. His legs are like sticks. And he's a human. What's wrong with him? He's not getting his vegetables. When this unit is placed on rearguard from hand, uh, search for your deck for a grade 3 named Gurgur and his hand and his card name. Reveal it to your opponent. Or put it into your hand shuffle deck. Choose a card from your hand. Discard it. When you're paying for stride, it gets plus 2 grades, which means it's a grade 3 in all intents and purposes. Honestly, this guy ain't bad. Um, I don't much, you know, it's like, it's one of those things where he pays for strides and stuff and you want to stride with this deck. But again, there's a lot of comboable cards in your grade one slots that you can use. And some of them, you know, you might see like a uh, black main witch. She's, when it's summoned from the deck or from hand, or no, it's just from deck, kill unit, and then look at the top card, play it. Uh, if you want to. You know, stuff like that. I know that sounds bad, but if you're just looking to chain things forever, you know, you can't go much, uh, you can't go very wrong with her. And plus, you know, she's a cutie. Uh, Candace, fantastic art. Probably the best gold paladin art right now. And it's not just because she's a chick. It's literally the best art. If it was a dude looking like this, though we'd have other issues maybe. Just choose a card from your hand, discard it when this unit is placed. Placed on the Guardian Circle from anywhere, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one unit being attacked, and it cannot be hit. So it, is, it doesn't even limit it to the Vanguard like the other uh, uh, G-Perfs. Perf Plus is whatever you want to call it. Um, really good stuff. And then we have Crest Gall. When this unit is placed on Rearguard from any point in time, choose another unit plus 2k. This would be better if it gave multiple units plus 2k, but it doesn't, so you should never play him. There's other older versions of him out there, I think. And there's, like, other clan versions, and they're all bad. Um, let's see here. Knight of Early Dawn, Coal. This is probably the second best card in the set next to Gurguit. Maybe third, if you like Elio a little better. But to me, he's the best. G-Break 1 and Unite. Put this unit into the soul. Look at top three. Choose one card. Shuffle deck. That card gets plus 2k. Now... For some reason, I thought he did too. Maybe they changed the translation or something. Um, but basically, G-Break, Unite, into Soul, top three, choose one, plus 2k. Now, you might be like, Ben, why the plus 2k? Well, that makes Fomgall a 10k attacker. It makes uh, 14ks out of your 12k attackers. 
there is a lot of things going on with this guy that you could do that can sort of use the plus 2k to go to another level. Now, there are other grade zeros in Gold Paladin that do basically the same thing and even faster than him. Like, for example, um, it's the, another, another bunny troop. Uh, it's sort of comboed up with Pelnor, but on... <laughs> Uh, when it boosts an attack that hits the Vanguard, counterblast one and assault top three, choose one, and then of course it's Pelinor or something, and then you do the Pelinor thing, or you do some other abilities, you know, that sort of thing. There's a lot out there that you can sort of work on, that you just have to make sure you're doing the right, uh, you're aware of the right combinations. Um, again, gold, uh, like, um, uh, I'll make this explicit, gold Paladin is all about those combos, baby. And if you can't get those combos, baby, you shouldn't really be playing uh, Gold Paladin. Uh, you should try to figure out, you know, a deck that actually works, you know, with your playing style, whatever that is. Boop. Two crits. Yeah. Four draws. Uh, three. Huh. Uh, three, no, wait, four stand triggers. Imperative Owl. Looks kind of badass and very freaky. Very freaky. Four heals, oh so cute. Curable angel. Uh, does she become a... No, she just looks like a stride. I don't know. She looks like a stride to me. I don't know what it is. Finally, uh, reprint two Flame of Victories. Put this unit in a soul. Choose a gold paladin plus 3k until end of battle. Uh, Flame of Victory ain't bad, actually. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do nowadays with cards with abilities in them. For example, there's Knight of the Azure... And then things like Catch Goal and um, Gigantech Bellringer and this guy. Um, and basically what you can do, let's say you're fighting a Shadow Witch deck. Top five, uh, top ten, choose two rear guards. Catch Goal, Catch Goal. <laughs> so you send Catch Goals back into the deck and just keep going with it, laughing at the poor little witches who think that they've got you because they made you call out two grade zero rear guards. And this guy's just another one, even though he's a little slower. At this point in the game, it's starting to become that you can't afford not to run triggers without abilities. I know that for some strange reason, Red Lightning is an incredibly popular card at uh, my local meta, where every week I hear some people go up to the shopkeep and go, hey, hey, do you have any uh, red lightnings? And he goes, no, child, and pats them on the head and shoes them away. Um, or maybe he says he'll see, but, you know, he sees, but, you know, he doesn't have any. Uh, and he didn't have any the last week when anyone asked either. Uh, or maybe he does this week. Is this, is this true? I, I found ten! You found ten. He found ten, everybody. The famine is over for... Two and a half people. Um, <laughs> the point is, is that get your hands on uh, cards with abilities, get your hands on triggers with abilities, and make sure that you know how to use them. If you don't know how to use them correctly, just go with the generic ones and keep them around for trade, because somebody, somewhere, is going to start begging for a red lightning. Uh, last two things here. I actually don't know why they chose Flame of Victory. I guess he was like the original Gold Paladin Crit Trigger or something. But, eh. By the way, this is the little card that comes with it. I really love these things, honestly. People have been using them as, like, damage tokens and stuff. But I just love them. This one's a little bit flimsier than the other ones, but it's still pretty good. It's got the Gold Paladin symbol. I love the fact that they unify the symbols. I think Alice on whatever thing she had back in the day had her own symbols at like the card fight wiki cribbed or something it was hilarious to watch it um and so like actually putting out official symbols really cuts down a lot of confusion and even though you don't really know what's going on with the symbols for all of them um except that you know the transformer clan dime police looks like a transformer autobot head you know you don't really know what's going on for some of them but you can guess and eventually i guess we'll all recognize he's on site but I love these things, and everyone has one. Finally, we have a reprint, gold, uh, Golden Dragon, Scourge Point Dragon. Now, he has a really good ability, and he's an excellent first stride if you're not going to Campbell. This guy's there if you just want to, like, boost your numbers by two, so that they hit, like, excellent 21k columns. But this guy, when your unit is placed on rearguard from deck, this unit and that unit get plus 5k until end of turn. So basically... 
Yagurgawit, Counterblast, Top 5, choose Fomgal. Fomgal is, when it's placed on rearguard from deck, uh, Top 3, choose 1, Boop. And I don't even think he's restricted to Fomgals or anything like that. So you can just choose whatever you want and just keep going. The point is, 5k for Fomgal, 5k for this guy, plus 2k from Gurgowitz ability. Let's say that this guy also, uh, let's say that they got a Magnus or something like that, because it's some freaky deck that combines um, bluish flames or something, I don't know. But it just can keep going, plus 5, plus 5. So you can give this thing plus 20k and your, and your column is plus 10k if you play your uh, decks right. As long as the cards come from deck, it's, it's good. There's also cards that go like Counter Blast, go into Solo, go into the drops on top three, choose one, put it on here. That still works, and hey, it could be a Catch Gall, it could be a Fom Gall, and even though you lose the plus 5k from the Catch Gall, the 5k on the Scourge Point remains. Whew. Yeah, he's just a good card with no obvious weaknesses, except for the fact that he doesn't do anything else. Alright then, I guess that covers just about everything here. I've covered the deck, I've covered what comes in it. Ugh, I even covered this mat a little bit with the cards. Uh, so yeah, happy trails, guys. This has been Wheel of the Mercenary King, signing out.